morning guys, it's me, Unicorn Conspiracy. So we're back to play some more Seduce Me. Um, I haven't played in a long time, so I can't remember exactly what's going on. A, a long time, like, you know, three days. Let's just get in and play, see what happens. I think we just defeated Malix, if I remember correctly. But, oh, oh, and the um, succubus person came and threatened us. I remember now. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Eventually I'm running around and the sun screamed at me to get up. I woke up before my alarm clock was nice. Stretched and got dressed, getting ready for school. She expects me to say goodbye to the boys. I will say good morning and we'll see them when I come back. No way am I going to say goodbye. Good. There's no... Good morning, there miss. There we go. Did you sleep well? Before I could lie, I hadn't answered in the back of my mind. Damien furrowed his eyebrows and stopped eating. Uh, freaking forgot about Damien. He's, oh, he looks angry, too. She's here. The boys looked at Amy in confusion while I cursed his ability silently in my mouth. Um, Damien, what's up with you? Of course she's here. She kind of owns the house. That's right, Matthew, I do. Damien looked to me, wanting me to explain. However, the threats that Diana gave me last night warned me to keep my mouth shut. Hmm. Let's be, just be honest. Uh, da, 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 da. A girl named Diana came by last night. Diana? Is she important? Does he not know who she is? Did she try to hurt you? Kinda. She's a succubus. The single word made the boys stop and stare at me. I looked to each boy, unsure of what was going through their minds. Should I have avoided it? But didn't Damien say she's here? Doesn't Damien know who she is then? So, she's come to try and bring us back. She must really be do desperate. Do you know who she is or not? I don't understand. Well, what should we do now? Nothing. She'll give up eventually. Oh, sure, Sam. Will she? You need to let me defend the answer to that question. Damn it, Damien. She said if I told you she'd make my life living hell. She can't possibly do that, right? She's not a devil. No, she isn't. However, she is a very powerful demon. She's a master of mind manipulation and has been trained in illusion. Unlike other demons who use strength to get power, she uses her charisma. She has the power to make armies bow to her and obey her every whim. That's... Why she's so obsessed with us. Wait, why? What do you mean? Well, she sort of has family ties to us. She was promised to marry one of us in exchange for more power. Oh. She's just some whacked up hussy who doesn't know how to close her legs. She's not a real threat. Oh, really? I feel insulted. Great. We looked around the room wondering where the voice came from, felt a cold sweat run down the back of my neck in fear, remembering what kind of power she had. Oh, they all squished together. Ugh, I don't like her at all. Entrance of the kitchen, juggling a single red apple, then she's not really juggling it, as she leaned in the archway. They always surrounded me, glaring at the intruder. So, you took up a human name as well. Beautiful name, isn't it? Well, for a human name, anyway. <laughs> what the hell do you want? To bring you back, of course. However, you weren't supposed to know that I was coming. I completely forgot about that little mind-reading ability. Oh, okay, that's why they didn't recognize <laughs> her. Mistake. Because they didn't know her name was Diane. I said, Diana. Okay. Then you walk towards being the boy step close for me in a protective circle. Diana left. My, my, my. What has the world come to? A group of demons protecting a human girl? I'll tell you right now, she's not that pretty. And from what I can tell, she's still a virgin. Well, they know that because they know I hadn't had a kiss before. My face grew red in complete anger and embarrassment. I don't think that's that embarrassing. How dare she! Um, I really don't care. Diana chuckled and smirked at me knowing that I wanted to hit her, but I had control of myself. Such control you have, human. You know your place very Okay, now well. that's not true. I just have manners. I didn't control the growl that escaped my throat, however. Well, will you all change your minds? I assure you, it's for the greater good. I expected the boys to say no, what I heard was complete silence. None of the boys replied to Diana, which made me both nervous and fearful as to why. Diana leaned her head back a bit, surprised for a different reason. No. <coughs> well, I see. Was silence truly them saying no to her? I looked around at the boys and saw the disobedience in their eyes giving me my answer. I felt my heart flutter, especially when my eyes landed on Damien. He kept close to me, glaring daggers into Diana. I could feel that he was completely adamant in his choice to stay because he loves me. I don't know what. I don't know what, but I was incredibly. I think I mean I don't know why. Then I stopped, pressed finger to her temple, rubbing it gently. 
Either all of you are playing a very convincing hard to get game, or you all must be out of your minds. Both. Angela looked at me, lacking read of mind except to read me. I could tell she wanted to do something, but the boys would stop her, so she just stared at him. Okay, she's trying to control me, but. No, 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 I guess I'll take my leave shoo, now. Shoo, shoo, now. Her leave? Was she serious? The boys around me straightened up and grew confused. Looks on their faces and they stepped back and away from us with a small, fla flaunting her, whoa, with a small bow, flaunting her cleavage. Whoa, she just like, zoomed into the earth. A deep purple pentagram appeared under her feet and Diana's body slowly sank to the floor. As her head vanished into the floor, the pentagram vanished. And once the boys relaxed and slowly began to return to their spots at the table, each deep in thought. She'll be back, but she won't kill us. She needs us She'll alive. Need me alive. Whatever. We'll just keep saying no. She can't force us to yes, come back. She can. She can't do anything but annoy us. Eventually, well, she'll why give up. Why are you taking this so lightly? That's the hope, anyway. Hopefully. Ding walked over and said before, and looking at me with concern. We'll protect you. Don't worry. I'm a little worried, honestly. I nodded, feeling that he was telling the truth, or at least a hopeful, uncomforting thought. Damien gently took my hand in his and thought brought it up to kiss my knuckles, however, making me blush and forget what I was thinking about. Hmm. The sound of collective chuckles and playful snickers whispered around the air, making me blush even more. But as Damien sighed and cleared his throat, the laughter stopped. I looked up to see he was glaring at his brothers with his lips on my hand. He and I pulled away from each other just as the sound of Naomi's car appeared. Technically, a sound doesn't appear, but you know. I quickly ate my food, waved to the boys, and left, confident that nothing was going to happen. Oh yeah, I have to go to school. Completely forgot about that. Never ever say that nothing will happen before the day is over. I avoided talking about the ride back home yesterday, saying that the ride was a one-time thing. Does that mean, uh, am I talking about my dad? I'll be riding with you guys from now on to and from school. The girls seemed very happy. We entered the school and quickly gathered our things from our lockers and headed to class. There were no events to our surprise. History wasn't exactly fun, but our teacher was great. At least he would have been great if he was in class that day. Is Diana going to teach... The class. I guess it's a terrible feeling she's going to be their substitute teacher. You know, man, teacher took their seats around me, teasing in front, naming beside before the class bell rang. We the Students, you'll be having a substitute for class today. Everyone meet Miss Diane. Called it. Called it. Called it. Is that what she words as class? At the door was the dean. At the door, the dean was Diana, looking over the students and smirking as her eyes on me. She stood at the teacher's desk, ignoring or welcoming the whispers from the other students before sitting on the wood and crossing her. Uh, sitting on the wood and crossing. Okay. Thank you, Dean. You can go now. With a wave of Diana's hand, the Dean left the room, closing the door, left the... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not spending a lot of time reading this because, honestly, I just don't want to. Diana smiled at us, making my stomach turn. What was she going to do? So, history. History, history, history. Such a silly thing, isn't it? I mean, what do we care about the past? We're in the present. A great teacher. The rest of the class hesitantly nodded in agreement, unsure about this new teacher, but willing to listen to more of what she had to say. The present is so full of wonderful things. While the labors of the past are the reason we have many things, it is our chance and privilege to utilize what has been given to us. Her charm was almost infectious. The class was practically starting to eat out of her hand. I looked around to see classmates grinning and agreeing with Diana. I pressed my lips together to listen further. I had no choice. What's even funnier about human beings is that some of the bits of history we hear is either made up or completely biased to one side. It's like a story you read as a child. That's actually true. You hear of the princess and the prince and they live happily ever after. But what about the family she left behind? What of her friends? She's threatening me. Students listened and agreed, but I could tell, however, that these words were all directed at me. The original story of the Little Mermaid, a perfect example of biased opinion. Here we have a girl who thinks she can be with this prince, but this prince has to marry a princess. Okay, that's not history, that's a fairy tale. Plus, she was a princess, just a princess of the sea. What would happen if the mermaid had her way? What makes the mermaid so important that the princess has to suffer the consequences? It doesn't matter what happens, I don't, I don't care. There's no way I was going to let her get to me. Despite her being the teacher, I was going to ignore her. There was no telling what she could do if I talked back. Diana looked to me, expecting me to speak, but I merely stared at her. A smirk graced her face, a glare graced mine. <laughs> I didn't need to fight to win. I like that line, actually. It's still something to think about, however, as we think of this story. 
It's so easy to believe that the mermaid was the heroine. More nonsense. I knew this was all subliminal message to me to make me pity her. My anger didn't allow any leeway to feel pity for her. How long was she putting to that? She wasn't a real teacher. Why would I pity her anyway, even if her story was true? She continued to rave about the injustice the princess had to suffer through while the mermaid wasn't the princess's sight to Diana. It wasn't justice to me. It was a fairy tale. The boys chose me. He chose me. She wasn't going to convince them otherwise, and I wasn't going to let her. Trust her arms up, making an obvious sexual noise that made some of the boys in the class shift in their seats. I rolled my eyes. <sighs> Well, that's enough about fairy tales. After all, the Little Mermaid was fated to lose her prince in the original story anyway. It was for the better, though. The kingdoms, I'm sure, flourished, and the prince and princess lived happily ever after. Hmm. I could tell that she was trying to put me to speak more and more. I knew she was wrong, but I wasn't intimidated enough to fall for her words and speak up. It's right better than that. I said to just watch and observe for the remainder of class. Her class had become a lecture, and, a le and no one spoke as she spouted nonsense. Diana then stopped talking and looked at the clock on the wall, reading it quickly. This class had barely begun. Why was she looking at the time? She leaned against the blackboard and smiled to us. I became worried. You know what? School isn't important. Everyone, go ahead and head home. Take the week you off. You don't have the authority to say that. Students began to chat happily or in confusion of the situation. Many thought it was a dream come true. Others knew better. Before anyone could protest, Diana pressed a finger to her lips and counted down with her fingers in the air. Three, two, one. The speakers of the classroom gently awoke, giving us an announcement we would never believe. Attention students. Due to an emergency faculty meeting, we will be closing school for the remainder of the day and this entire week. Please leave the school quickly and quietly and have a good rest of the week. Why does Diana want the school to close? She used her powers on them. Damn it, I felt the need to stop her, but how could I stop a demon in the middle of a public area? How could I stop her in the middle of a private area? She smiled before gesturing to the door. Have a nice week off. School will resume next week. Students filed out, chatting about the new impromptu plan. Susie was beyond happy, but Naomi was hesitant. Before we could pack up and leave, Diana stepped to us. Excuse me, little miss. I'd like you to stay a little while. There's something we need to I'm discuss. I'm not little. Thank you very much. As Diana looked to Susie and Naomi, she snapped her fingers, making my friends tense up. You two can head home. Don't worry about your friend until next week, okay? If you contact her, she won't reply, so don't bother. If she contacts you, ignore her, because she's just Itch. fine. As if on command, <coughs> Susie and Naomi left the room. I tried to march after them, <coughs> but, Di but, Di but Diomi, Diana stepped in my path, warning me with her eyes that if I followed, there would be hell to pay. I had lost my two friends, at least for the week. Diana and I were alone, just like she wanted, which means there's no one looking after me except the boys, and who knows how long that's going to last. I slammed my hands on the desk in front of me and glared at Diana. I was hoping it would have a slam noise, like, I'll just, just slam my thighs. That kind of hurt a little bit. What are you doing and what are you thinking? What? Do I not make a good no. teacher? I figured you should have a little lesson. So I took matters into my own hands. What is this music? Whatever you're trying to do won't work. You really think yep. so, dear? And what makes you so sure about okay. that? What was making me so sure? Why was I so confident? Were the boys worth this? <sighs> um, yes, 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 yes. Not confident because I'm a strong, independent woman. Thoughts began to fill with doubt. All of the uncertainties about this whole ordeal began to cloud my mind, but then I pushed the cloud away because I'm a big girl. If the boys were ever found out, they'd be held to pay. Was it worth it? What about Diana? What would she do to me? Would she make my parents forget about me completely? Would she ruin my friend's lives out of spite? No, we'll just, you know, slit her throat. That's how, that's how you deal with bitches, right? I don't advocate slitting the video on so Don't do that. In my gut, I felt a stone of confidence trying to fight back, but the heaviness of my thoughts began to dissolve that stone little by little. Come on, what was going on with me? I looked at it and was gaze, but she's manipulating me. That's what's going on. She was using her powers on me. This time, I was away from home, so I couldn't escape. But I know she's using her powers, so isn't that knowledge enough to help me? Or could I? Did I want to? The way she stared at me made me feel warm and fuzzy inside my chest. I felt like melting. No! 
thing. I lifted a hand under my chin and ran her thumb over my lips, licking her own. Ew. I could feel little shots of energy zipping from under my skin. Sexual assault. Stranger danger. Now, let's have a little taste of that sweet, virginal sexual energy. No. I watched as she leaned in, ready to kiss me and take my energy. Half of my body felt elation at the idea. The other half completely rejected it and didn't want her to even touch me. That's the idea you need to listen to here. Damien. Suddenly Diana stopped in her tracks. Damien? Who is- Damien is my lad. It then dawned on her. Ah, one of the boys. Why don't you tell me which boy is Damien? I felt myself nod in compliance. Dada youngish? Is he? I thought Matthew was the youngest. Why don't I just say Damien's real name and then he'll show up? He said he would. Diana giggled in reply before letting go of my face and stepping back. Really? The bastard's son with you? So, notifications everywhere. Yes, really. I nodded once again, but this time was probably my own decision to reply. I didn't let out someone to Casper or something with me. Alright then. Well, if it's the youngest son you're infatuated with. You don't mind. Diana chuckled before kissing my nose, where I felt a shot of energy zap out of my body, almost making me dizzy and recoil. Stealing my energy. Turned to the desk and sat on the wood, crossing- it. They keep saying that. You can go now. Remember, no class for the rest of Whatever. the week. How am I supposed to get home? My two friends left me here thanks to you. Oh, were they your ride? <laughs> my apologies. Let me Why help you. Why did I even then. say I was stuck here? I should have just- Pulled out my phone, called someone, and been like, hey, shizzle, I need a ride. I looked at her hand and snapped her fingers. I felt the floor sink away from underneath me, forcing me to look down. A purple panic grabs turned my feet, pulling me to the ground. Whoa! Before I could fight, however, I sank fully into the floor, fading into darkness and shutting my eyes. As I opened them, I felt my silk sheets around me, soothing my anxiety from the darkness that I breathed around me. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm in my bed. Why did she bring me home? Was this an illusion? Was I being tricked? Something was going on. Set up in bed, looking around me. I was indeed in my room. There was no mistake about that. Why? Diana is too strange. Was this a game? Was this part of her plan to get the boys back? I was lost and confused more than ever, despite my logical thought trying to piece the puzzle that is Diana together. The more I tried to solve it, the less I understood about the situation I was in. I was interrupted, however, by my door suddenly opening, revealing the boys with Damien's hand on the door knob. The boys with Damien. Grammar, guys. Grammar. Miss, what are you doing here? Sleeping, obviously. Jeez. Aren't you supposed to be in no. school? Turn my eyebrows, furrowed my eyebrows, turn my eyebrows, stared at Damien, asking him to answer their questions through my thoughts, because apparently I don't want to speak anymore. Diana sent her back here. She invaded her school and sent all the students back home. Thanks, Damien. What is that bitch up to? Seriously! Diana's playing around for no I don't reason. Say no reason. Maybe it's part of her yeah. plan. They continued to argue back and forth about Diana, fueling an almost jealous curiosity in me. Damien seemed to be too deep within the talking to notice my thoughts, for he didn't even stop talking alongside his brother. Jealous curiosity. What is... Why was Diana after them? Why did she want to bring them back? What was so important about the boys that she would travel to the human world to get them? That's a good question. Enough was enough. I needed answers. Hey! They saw my ring staring me surprised. I fell up with a shush in my lab was cursed speech. Why is Diana here? Why does she want to bring you all back? What exactly did you all run from? Why did you run from it? These are all very important questions that I probably should have asked earlier on. Miss, we- Don't miss me, please. I need to know what's going on. I won't be left in the dark about this. I want to know what I am facing. We looked at each other hesitantly, unsure of what to reply. Finally, Sam pushed Damien towards the bed, making him buckle while laying on his knees with his torso over the edge of the mattress. Damien, do the thing. The thing? Sam, you're not suggesting. Why not? She deserves to know everything, especially if Diana is targeting her. I agree. Her. Sam's Thank right. You. I guess we have no choice then. I was very confused. Stood before climbing onto the bed with me, sitting across from me on his knees. We are going to show you everything. You have to trust me, okay? The minute you stop trusting me, the vision will okay. stop. The vision? Just trust okay. me. Uh, but I nodded. He placed his hands on each side of my head, gently pressing his thumbs into the skin above my eyebrows. I could only stare at Damien as his eyes began to glow gold, and energy began to be both pulled out of me and forced into my head. Interesting. Ooh. 
Within seconds, my vision went black once again. I was unsure of what Damien was doing, but soon shapes and textures slowly began to appear around me. I found myself sitting on the stone floor in the middle of what looked like a fantasy throne room. Is this their castle? Where am I? I looked down a stone Whoa! Whoa. How dare they try to negotiate with me? Do they not know whom they speak to? Is this to? the king of hell? I gasped and ran behind the voice and then frightened her, turning me into a frightened child. My lord, please calm I yourself. Like this is pretty cool. Calm? They're merely testing my resolve. I have more than half of a mind to send my greatest armies to take what should be mine. They are mere insects in the way of my kingdom's expansion. They merely asked for a marriage joining. So I'm to bow to them and share my land that I have so rightfully conquered? I peeked from behind the pillar to see a large demon covered in royal clothes but buff enough to be a military commander. His rage practically emanated from his body as he growled at his servant. Okay. They are willing to give their land to you, sire. All they ask is for one of your sons to marry their daughter, whom I might add is as beautiful as can be. This is ridiculous! To suggest that I need their approval to take their land is beyond insanity. What makes them think I care about their precious daughter? Did I mention that she is a prodigy of our kind, sire? A prodigy? Yes, my lord. This succubus is a master of her skills in magic and mind manipulation. She is said to sway armies with a snap of her fingers, despite being as young as she is. Impossible! If only it were, sire. This succubus is dangerous, but would be a great asset to have should we agree to this arrangement. The only reason she cannot face you, my lord, is because you are the strongest demon in the plains. Is this supposed to change my mind? Yes, my lord. You are doing a terrible job at convincing me. My apologies, sire. I've lost. I could tell that they were talking about Diana, but why? Father. Sitting another demon who looked like a mere child, staring at the demon commander on the throne. Father. Ah, Raystro, have you finished your training? Yes, Father. Then what do you want? I want to be with my brothers the best of the day, Father. Seems like a good. Maybe we walked the young demon, gripped his hair, picking him up off the ground and forcing him to look up at his snarl. The young demon, however, looked unfazed. Huh, arrogance. Why should I allow you to be with them? I should kill you for your lack of respect to me. Damien. Because I want to be with them, father. I could only stare at the young demon faced his father, despite the massive difference between them. This young demon seemed weaker and easy to kill versus the demon commander. Why would this man kill his son, though? Was this commander that ruthless? I mean, they're demons. Dork. However, I wasn't expecting him to laugh and release the young demon. <laughs> Good! Assertive even in the face of danger. That is why you are my favorite mm -hmm. son. I can only stare wide-eyed as the commander placed his hand on the demon's shoulder. Very well. Go. Tomorrow, you will show me your training. Grinned widely before running off. I have a thought. Really. Yes, my lord? How old is this daughter? As old as your fifth, sire. Do you believe this proposal is worth it? Obviously. Yes, sire. Tell those insects that they are safe for now. I will consider their offer. Sire, are you certain? Did I stutter? Now go! Demon servant quickly ran off. As soon as he passed the pillar I was hiding behind, he along with the commander vanished into thin air. What had happened? A demon who looked around my age walked into the room reading a book. Is that... Please, Trow, your nose is stuck in those books. Will you not lift your head up from them once in a while? That voice. I looked around the pillar to see a second demon leaning against another pillar and smirking at Restrail. Aren't you supposed to be with your mother practicing the harpsichord? 
I am. But I had a feeling that you were in danger. In danger? What are you- ATTACK! All of a sudden, three shadows zipped through the room and slammed into Rispio, forcing him to fall to the ground and drop his book. As the sight cleared for me, there were three demons in a dog pile with Rispio at the bottom. Get off! No way! You haven't had a break in months from those stupid butts! It's time for punishment! Death by Brotherhood! No more reading! I told you that you were in danger. I suddenly knew who these demons were. It's the boys. One of the demons, who I assumed was Matthew, grabbed the book from the floor and opened it, reading it mockingly. How can you read this, Race Girl? It's all about war strategy! It's boring! I have to, Zakara! Get off! There's only one thing you need to know about strategy. Kill them all! Take no prisoners! You sound just like father! <laughs> Couldn't help but giggle. It was cute to seeing them act like childish. Blah, 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 blah. You all are reckless. At least we have fun. It's true. You haven't been with us in weeks. Don't you think it's time for a break? I'm sure father won't mind. But I have to... I know you want to, Ray Strau. Damn it. I... What is going on here? I shot my head to the voice to the commander, aged a little, staring at the boys with arms crossed... This chest. Damien quickly dashed and hid behind Sam, peeking over his shoulder as a large commander. Nothing is going on. We just passed by each other. Then why does your brother have your book? I was showing him what I was learning, Father. Return to your studies, Ray Stroud. The rest of you out of my sight. Do not disturb your brother again. I could only stare as James gently took his book and, without looking at his brother's return to reading. The commander walked past him, growling at Sam and Damien before leaving the room. What's up with that? Don't worry about it. We'll find a way to get him back. I don't know. He's on a very tight leash. James on a tight leash. Hmm. Ezra, you're quiet. What did you hear? He's going to a negotiation meeting. He's going to arrange a marriage. A marriage? For who? It must be for one of us. He hasn't decided who will marry her. It's a girl from a kingdom he wants to take over. But that's uncharacteristic of him. Usually he'd just attack with the army. Whatever the case is, one of us is getting married. I hope it isn't me. What about Ray Strau? He's the eldest. It would make sense, but having a succubus marrying one of us means that she'll be practically married to all of us. Before the conversation could have been to avoid bandages there, they were replaced by an older Damien and Matthew sitting with each other in the middle of the throne room. Do you Look, think we should? Some, some nice clothes you got there. I really want to. I want to as well. Still, it'll be hard to convince Raystero since he's the one about to be married and he's the favorite. We don't know that, Zakeru. Maybe she's set to marry you. No way! I don't want to get <laughs> married! I don't think you'll have a problem with that baby face of yours. Ooh, look at them um, pants. I looked over to see Sam join the duo, crossing his arms and raising his eyebrow at his brothers. What are you two talking about? We got into contact with the human world again. Come on, Ezreal. Give humans too much attention. These horns are quite long. No way! You gotta listen! They apparently have stores and books and schools and stuff! So what? It's full of humans who piss on each other for no reason. They're no better than the devil spawn. Nuh-uh! The one we were talking to wasn't like that! How do you know, Sekeru? Because I do! What is going on here? They want to go to the human world. The human world? Racero, think about it! You won't have to marry that girl and be the heir anymore! You could be with us, and we can make lives for ourselves in the new world! Now you're just talking nonsense. I vote that we do it. Huh? Oh, not you two. Think about it. This may be our chance to finally get away from this political nonsense we're stuck in. We may be nobles, but we're still our own beings. <sighs> Ristrao is in. What? Azrael! Woo! So how do we get there? Are you kidding me? You don't even know how we'd get there. A simple spell should work, but it would require someone from the human world to help us get there. We can ask him! 
Oh, he definitely helped us. My grandpa. I'm... I'm not so sure about... Restra, aren't you tired of pleasing father all of the time? I am, but... If you stay, you'll be married off and become ruler of father's kingdom. You'll have no time for yourself or with us, and you'll be constantly at war with the other realms for power. You'll most likely turn into the spitting image of father. <laughs> What he's saying is, get your head out of your ass and let's go. If you don't say yes, I'll drag your princely ass with us. I don't care what that bastard of a father mm. wants. Come on, Raystero. All right, let's do this. What's the plan? Couldn't believe what was happening. I was seeing the history of their lives before my eyes. They were nobles, and James was the heir to the kingdom that the commander ruled. Even more so, he was going to be married to Diana. They don't know that for sure. They sacrifice everything to leave and be together. They'd rather be free than remain there in their noble roles. It's hard to feel a little jealous. They were able to leave while I was still expected to be what my father wanted me to be. How they were able to leave was uncertain still, but I knew I would learn in time. I closed my eyes and mentally asked Damien to end the vision. As soon as I asked, the world around me slowly vanished, and I was brought back to the bedroom where I sat with my head nestled into Damien's hands. And we're going to end that episode here. Story's interesting, like always. Looking forward to play more, like always. And, um, yeah, that's about it. What you looking at? Don't need to rush, have some, uh, chocolate. Shit. Chocolate's good. As always, all my love to all of you. All the Palmer's love to. Look at this fool. <laughs>